So let's um, <clears throat> take a moment to pray and uh, then we'll start. Kiran, can you please pray with the class and just ask God to help us learn and make use of these things in ministry? Then we'll start. <clears throat> yes, sir. We'll pray. Father God, we come before your throne once again. Father God, we want to just say thank you, Father God, to everything. And Father God, submitting to you and all the students. But sister also, Father God, uh, whatever today we will learn, Father God, help us to understand and mm. use to in your kingdom work, Father God. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> all right. So yesterday we talked about uh, video production. Uh, I just gave some <clears throat> idea on what goes into uh, doing a video production uh, right from the camera and the other kinds of equipment that we need. And, uh, um, you know, uh, just to record videos outside from, you know, using a mobile phone, which is okay for small, <clears throat> small videos. But if we are trying to do, you know, you're talking about a Sunday service or you're talking about other kinds of videos and promotions uh, and you want to do, you know, really good quality and have all kinds of uh, effects and so on content, uh, then it's good to ha uh, do it as a form, as a production. Today, I just want to talk a little bit about <clears throat> live streaming. Uh, and just share with us, you know, a, 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 give us an idea. What are what are the equipment? What things go into uh, live streaming, and uh, uh, and just give us an idea on that. Now, all of these things, of course, are going to be done by our <clears throat> technical people. Uh, you and I won't be uh, sitting and doing these things, uh, but it, it's nice to have an idea of what's going on. And uh, um, and sometimes uh, when 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 there are problems or you know, and they come and tell you, look, this is the problem, that's the problem. Um, uh, you will at least know what they're talking about, and uh, you know you could hopefully put them in touch with the right people to help uh, solve the problem, right? Uh, and it's always good to have an idea of what's going on. Uh, and so on. So even though you and I may not be necessarily actually doing the live streaming, there will be the people involved who are doing the live streaming, the technical people. Uh, uh, it's good for us to know, right? <clears throat> so I'm just going to, from that perspective, I'm just going to share with us some information here on uh, uh, live streaming, how it actually happens, and uh, we'll close right after that. Now, uh, live streaming uh, platform course, we know that um, it uh, enables us to give audio video uh, 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 content to people in real time, right? So uh, instead of, uh, you know, you can, of course, record a video and put it up there. But uh, if you want people to see the service or an event or something in, in real time as it is happening, then we do live streaming. Uh, now, of course, we understand that uh, some platforms allow us to do premieres. That means you um, you have a pre uh, a video that's already recorded, but you put it up on the platform and then you premiere it. That means it goes live. It starts streaming out of that platform at a certain day and time. So then you know people come and watch from there and interact on it. And of course they can always watch it later on as well. So you can do it in real time as it is happening, or you can uh, premiere the video, which is, it's a pre-recorded video and you are releasing it. Real time is what we are talking about, live streaming. Right? Now, there are many, many chan <clears throat> platforms through which live streaming can be done. Uh, many of them are free and some are paid. Uh, so the most common ones, I think, uh, would be, of course, be YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So this is what uh, would be the common ones that are used. And also in, <clears throat> for church and ministry, usually you would use these uh, on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram. Now, <clears throat> the adv advantage with live stream, uh, some of the things 
that we can think of is uh, along with the live stream, you can have live chat so that, uh, you know, people are interacting with your live video. They're also responding and you can have uh, interaction with people that way. Um, uh, some When you are, uh, you know, you can create a sense of anticipation when you're saying, hey, you know, the live stream is going to happen uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And so you can have a countdown or just before it's starting, you can have a countdown. So you're creating a sense of anticipation, looking forward to it kind of thing, right? Uh, and then what you are live streaming is also automatically recorded. So the video is going to be available even after the event. So uh, if anybody missed it, uh, they can play it back. Or if somebody wants to go back and see it again, uh, they can do that. So that's again, an added advantage. And, uh, <clears throat> Uh, you know, uh, content delivery networks that, uh, you know, so that means that the, uh, the delivery networks in this case, for example, YouTube, Facebook, it goes through that and people can watch it um, on uh, any device that is connected to the internet. So that's a big advantage. You know, you could, uh, uh, because it's going through these global content delivery networks, uh, you don't have to worry about you know, hey, how will this reach somebody in some other part of the world? As long as they have a device um, that connects to YouTube or uh, Facebook or wherever you're streaming, they can watch your content, right? So you, you and I don't have to worry about it. It's taken care for us. And also, uh, uh, we can get data through live control. So that means afterwards you can see, you know, oh, how many people actually watched um, my live stream, the live stream, how many are watching, how many are engaging. So you can actually see that information in real time. So these are some advantages of using some of these live streaming platforms, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, uh, and since these are free, usually YouTube, Facebook, Instagram would be uh, a platform that many people will use. Okay, so now I just want us to understand the configuration like how it is it how actually this is done now at a very simple now this is you know a, a setup uh, uh meaning uh, this is a configuration that we use now uh, uh, it, it may seem complicated but let's let's start with the very basic see at a very basic level you could just live stream from your phone right uh, if you have your youtube app uh, you could, uh, you could, example, you could just connect and uh, you could be live on uh, any, any, any live streaming app or uh, platform. You could do something simple or you could go from a single camera uh, connected to a computer and go straight to, you know, uh, YouTube or something. So you don't necessarily have to have all of these things. So you can have just one camera connected to a, a computer and go straight to YouTube. Okay. So you can do that. But uh, if you're thinking about live streaming a service, a Sunday service or a conference or something like that, then this setup that you're seeing here is something that would be very useful. And I'll explain, uh, you know, what, what is happening. So basically, what we need is a switcher, an audio, video, mixer, and switcher. Now, what does this do? This mixer and switcher takes in many, many inputs, right? So I've just shown one camera, but you could have, say, four cameras, right? So four different cameras are coming in. Input from four different cameras are coming into the audio, video, mixer, and switcher. Similarly, audio. I've shown only one microphone, but really you, you will be getting audio from many different sources. You know, so you have musicians, others. So all that audio is coming here. Okay, now let me just, uh, just keep that thought there. Let me just change to uh, uh, what I, we had seen earlier about audio, right? What we had seen earlier, like last week, uh, we had talked about this public address system. You know, so there's a, a mixer here, 
and it mixes this front of house console mixes the sound for inside the auditorium and what's happening inside. But there's a output of the audio that goes to what another console called broadcast console. So there's another person sitting here. This person is mixing the sound for other users. And one of them is to for live stream. Okay, so this front of house console is receiving input from all the mics that are on stage and the sound comes here and they're mixing it and they are sending it back to the speakers inside the auditorium. Uh, they, they're sending it to uh, the speakers that are on stage, etc. But the raw output is also sent here to a broadcast console where here mixing is done for uh, the sound, the audio sound is done for uh, broadcast. And one of the outputs is the, uh, this mixer here, this input, this audio comes here. Okay. So there is an audio coming in to this audio video mixer and switcher. And there are many, many inputs from the cameras, different cameras, they're collecting pictures. And uh, I've just shown you, I've shown you a picture of just this little box here, which is the Blackmagic video switcher. But actually, <clears throat> the video switcher will also have a computer next to it, right? Now you can use a hardware like this that we're showing you, a Blackmagic video, or you could even use a software switcher, example, Wirecast, that means it's sitting on a computer. But this is much preferred, okay? Uh, uh, a Blackmagic video hardware switcher. Now, what does the switcher do? So you're getting video uh, signals from, you know, uh, say four cameras, you're getting your audio. Uh, the mixer and the switcher here is, so is combining all of these signals using the laptop. And the person who's controlling this decides who, what is shown when. All right. So if you, as an example, if you go to their website, um, I'm just going to, this is Blackmagic uh, website. So you see, uh, this person has a computer. He's got this device here. He can see, you know, the, the, there are multiple cameras. Uh, okay, here there's just, this person is speaking, but actually you can have multiple inputs and you can combine uh, different things. So uh, see this person is standing in front of a green screen but what he's composing is making her look like she's standing in front of something else, right? So he's combined inputs from, uh, so this he's combined this screen, which is has a chart with this image, that is she's standing in front of a green screen, as well as he has combined, I think this one, or, or maybe he's combined these two, to compose this picture, you know? So he's mixing it. He's mixing inputs, different uh, um, inputs. And he sh this is what he's going to be showing to the people. And he's probably getting other inputs as well. And if he wants to, he can change to, he can, you know, release out some other inputs, right? So basically there are many inputs coming and this person sitting here is deciding what will the final output be like. And he can mix them. He can add, uh, you know, he can, uh, there could be text coming in from one and uh, so many things, you know, so he could mix it. So there are multiple channels coming in and he's mixing and basically composing the final video output that's going to be seen. Okay. So that's what this person is doing this who who's controlling this audio video mixer that's what uh he is doing okay he decides so i'm saying he but the person operating the uh video audio video mixer and switcher decides on that and then that is sent to an encoder so basically this is a computer which has a software running on it uh, open broadcasters of OBS. It's a free open source software. So they, it goes here. Now, 
there are options, you know, so like I just put R. So the encoder can be a software encoder, as in this case, what we use, uh, open broadcaster software, or we could even use ProPresenter 7, so on. Or it could be a hardware encoder. You know, so you could use a hardware device as an encoder. Uh, so you know, we've tried both options, and right now we're just using uh, uh, a software encoder. And uh, so the output, you know, so the whatever this person has mixed comes here. And basically the encoder prepares this signal to be sent out to the video, the platforms. Okay. But now we want to make, we want to multicast or simulcast. That means uh, we want this output to be available simultaneously on different uh, platforms. Example, we want it to be available at the same time on YouTube Live, or YouTube, Facebook Live, uh, maybe our website, maybe Instagram. You know, you could have many options. So, uh, so for that, what we use is a, a router and a switch. So that means single input, multiple outputs. So from the encoder, which prepares the signal to be sent out. Uh, you know, you control various things like the bitrate and the video uh, streaming, all of that, uh, how the output signal. And then it's sent to this router and switch from which one signal is sent to YouTube. One is goes to Facebook Live. And if you want to, you know, website or to, Instagram and so on, right? It goes to those platforms where people can watch. So here's the audience. The audience connects to the platform, YouTube or Facebook, Instagram, so on, and they watch it, okay? So at a high level, this is what we need, you know, for doing live streaming uh, of a service. So you need this uh, switcher uh, so, and somebody who knows how to, you know, run, work it, or manage that and decide what you want. Uh, bringing in all the uh, inputs, then you need an encoder. And if you want to go to multiple platforms, you need the switch. If you don't want multiple platforms, you're doing only on YouTube, then you don't need the switch. You could, you know, go straight to YouTube. From the computer, you go straight to YouTube. Uh, and if you, but if you want to do this, you do through a switch and keeps the uh, stream stable and people connect and they watch it. Now, there are other options, like you could also use an online streaming service, which is like, um, instead of you doing this, you know, there, there's a service providers who can uh, send this out for you on many, many different channels similar, simultaneously or called simulcast. They can do this for you or you can connect it yourself and do so the output of the computer can go to a service provider and they will send it out to, you know, all the channels you want it to go out on. Or you can physically set it up and connect to those channels. So uh, uh, what you're seeing on top here is what we are using right now. We have tried other, other configurations as well and then we finally decided to work with this configuration. So this is what we are using right now, okay? Um, now, let's see, so I've covered this. Now, if you get into a little bit more detail, it, 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 this might seem a little confusing, but this just shows all the connections, right? So this is the video switcher, okay? And we have inputs coming to the video switcher from camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four. So four cameras, all the inputs are coming to this video switcher. Okay, now one of these cameras is a mobile camera, meaning it's moving, so it's wireless. It's connected through a wireless device. So this person having this camera can be moving around the auditorium, whereas these cameras are on tripods. They are uh, uh, positioned at a place and they are connected by wire. And all these wires come into the video switcher mixer. Now, of course, uh, there is somebody sitting with a, with a laptop who is controlling this video switcher. Uh, yeah, so this laptop. So this laptop 
is actually controlling what's happening here. So this person can see, you know, all the inputs coming in and this person on this, on this computer decides, you know, which one I'm going to show. And then there is also uh, uh, um, uh, the, uh, so, oh, oh, okay, so here in this particular case, uh, this is being used as a, there's a backup uh, OBS and thing. So the output from here, from the video switcher is going out or to multiple, so multiple places. There is a, you can view it here. Uh, it's also going out to, uh, there's a monitor on the stage. So people uh, can see what's happening here. Um, and uh, this person who's a um, presenter. So these people are controlling uh, what is going on here. That means on the uh, stage, but this output is also coming in here. So uh, this person is doing the slides for the sermon. Right. So this person is controlling the verses, the scripture, those kind of things. Yeah. But this output is, is coming to the stage monitor and is also going to the video switcher. Right. So um, the person is controlling the black magic and superimpose uh, the scriptures. Uh, basically, we call it lower third. So we show, show it at the lower third of the screen. So he puts it down on the lower third and make sure that that goes out, right? And then, uh, yeah, so the audio splitter also comes in, audio is also coming in, and ultimately it goes out for uh, streaming, right? So um, the live stream output goes. Now, in this case, we are showing a, a video encoder, a hardware encoder. So this was an old configuration. That means it was going through a hardware to a streaming server. That means it was going like this. Um, it was going like this. Through this hardware, it was going out. And we kept this as a backup. Uh, that was an old configuration, but now we've moved to this and this is kept as a backup. But so, you know, so uh, this picture is showing, you know, uh, the actual connections and how all these things work. And then the output goes to the live stream. From here, it goes to the live stream. Or if this fails, we switch to the studio. And then from the OBS studio, we can go out to the live stream. Right. So this is what, uh, at a high level, things look like. Right. So uh, essentially, what we would need is uh, audio video switcher and uh, the encoder and out to YouTube, right? So let me say something. If you're doing something very simple, right? You're using maybe a single camera. You don't need a switcher. You could go from camera uh, and the audio. You can go uh, get it into your uh, computer encoder and go straight out, right? So you don't need necessarily to do something uh, with the video switcher. It's a very simple setup. You can actually go out. And if you're just going out to one channel, you don't need a router switch. Or if you're using a external service provider, you don't need a router switch. You can go through uh, Excel service provider. But if you're having multiple cameras and you want to, you know, control, uh, you know, what is shown where, and you, you want to superimpose things, you want, you know, like, a, a, you know, a, a good bringing together of all the camera outputs and so on, then you need to have the switcher, somebody operating it, deciding on what is finally shown at any given moment, and then that goes out to the public. Now. Initially, when you get started, you could uh, have uh, a vendor do all of this for you. That means uh, you don't necessarily have to have people yourself uh, in-house do this. You can uh, bring a vendor and say, "Hey, I, I need to, you know, I need to have all this set up, and they can bring their hardware and software and get it done for you." 
uh, but over time, uh, it's 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 useful to buy the hardware and have people trained and have all of this done by your own people. And that's kind of what we are doing now. So uh, we have our own people. Uh, we just rent out some multiple cameras, and but we've we have our own switcher and our computer and so on, and we have our own people uh, do this work so that we can stream, you know, uh, our Sunday services and so on. Okay. So um, let's see. Any 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 questions here? Is is I've just given you a, a quick um, uh, overview of how live streaming happens. Um, any questions? Or any thoughts? Uh, Pastor, do you have a, a sort of checklist for uh, for certain hardware that are required to set up uh, for for a basic life live streaming? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like this, yeah. This so I. Okay. Mm. So I can uh, I can uh, just put it together. Um, say that you know okay this is these are the basic things you need. So I will just uh, you know put it on one page, and I can uh, share it with us, so that you you have it handy, and uh, when you're ready to you know use it uh, when you you know when you want to do that you can just cross reference that. I can do it for you. Yeah, I can do that. Thanks, yeah. yeah, you're welcome. So um, overall, it's not too complicated. And uh, people will, you know, uh, do this for you. Um, the main thing is you need to know, you need to have a Blackmagic audio video switch mixer and switcher. And you can use the free open source OBS software. Uh, some organizations would use the commercial ProPresenter 7 uh, for encoder, but we are using OBS, which is free. And then you go out um, to your streaming platform, whether YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, so on. Okay. So I'll put a little checklist and I'll release that uh, for the class so you could use it. And uh, so next week, what I want to do is talk a little, little bit about stage production. So that uh, that means, uh, so we've learned about the audio, uh, the audio setup, um, cameras, and live streaming. I will give you the checklist. So now it is very important that you also think about the stage, right? Because if you're going to live stream it, uh, uh, one is you think about the Sunday service. Um, uh, you know, if you want to live stream your Sunday service, uh, the stage is very important. You know, um, because people are going to see that and they're going to be seeing that almost all the time for maybe two hours of the service. So what is on the stage has to be thought out very carefully. And similarly, if you are doing kind of a production, like maybe a skit, a drama, uh, some play on the stage, and you're live streaming it. Now, you, of course, you'll have people in the audience who are watching, of course, or the congregation, the church people. But at the same time, you know, you're live streaming it also, which means there are people outside online watching it. Uh, what are some things to keep in mind? And, and, and what are some ways you can enhance the stage in a very simple way, right? So uh, next week, I'll just talk a little bit. Maybe we'll spend one class, one lecture, uh, a part of a lecture on the stage production. Something to think in mind, uh, keep in mind when you're thinking about the stage. Um, because, you know, we also went through that learning process. Uh, initially, we didn't know anything. Our, our stage was very messy. You know, the drum kits are there, the, the, all the instruments were there and the stage pulpit was, the pulpit was there. And I mean, and we were, we were trying to do a live stream, you know, 
And we didn't think about all these things, you know, and we were doing live stream. And those days we used to have 50 people, 25, 30 people, sometimes 50 people who would watch us online. Uh, and we didn't think about, you know, what is sitting on the stage is it's what they are seeing all the time. And so how do you do with it? How do you, you know, make the production better? Because, uh, you know, when you're watching something on a computer screen or on your phone, that's all you have. You know, you don't, you don't have the people around you to, and you don't experience that. You're only seeing on your screen. So uh, we, you know, slowly we learned, okay, so we have to give some thought to, if a, or to what is on the stage, you know, keep it clean, the lighting, things where people stand, and then the visual. How do you create a picture that will, uh, you know, that will, it'll retain, of course, it, we want to retain the attention of the viewer, but it also should be like a full picture that's communicating an, a message, right? So, of course, the preacher is preaching, but the person who's seeing it online is seeing everything else on the stage. And so you want to communicate a full message uh, to people who are watching online. Uh, and of course, also there are people inside the auditorium, they are also seeing, and it should, you know, it's the full thing is a message to the people. So stage production is uh, something to think about. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, uh, get all worried about it, but as you move slowly, uh, you keep improving step by step, at some point you have to think about it, right? Okay, first you get your audio right so that people can hear you clearly. Then you start thinking about the camera, the video production, okay? Then you're saying, okay, we're also gonna do a live stream. Okay, good. But then when you start doing video production and live stream, then you have to think about the stage, the stage production, what's happening, right? Uh, and so I'll just share some uh, some of our learn learnings. I, I'm not saying, you know, definitely there are many churches who are more advanced, uh, who are doing some great production and making use of technology in a tremendous way. Um, but I'll just share some basic learnings that we have had so far on the whole production. What, some, what are some things you can use? And they're not very expensive these days. Uh, you can keep that in mind so that, you know, when the time comes, you can think of using that. Um, effectively uh, to enhance uh, what what the preaching and the teaching and the ministry that's happening. Okay, so let's wrap up for today. Uh, it's a, it was a short class, just an overview on uh, live streaming, and uh, I will put together a checklist that you can use, and I'll share it with you next class. Okay, so thank you so much for being on the class today. We'll uh, pray and we will. Dismiss. Um, Thomas, would you pray with us, please? Sure, Pastor. I'll pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for today's class, Daddy. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Dad. We had a wonderful day learning about Revelation, learning about the media. Thank you for your goodness as we learn today, Father. Let me reach many audience through the platform of Instagram and Facebook, YouTube. Father, the switcher and the video and everything. Father, help us to go practically, remember all these things and do effectively the kingdom of God. We thank you, Dad, for your mercy and grace. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you again next week. God bless. Bye now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now.